showing uh, uh, you know in, in Torsity Google and I saw mine on YouTube you know, because mm -hmm. you can now have access to every wonderful YouTube sessions. You call the and it's true, you call science in, you know, across the world in the last uh, some decades, you, you call it the edifice of government science. You know, science is the fact that public medicine. When that happens, uh, when governments change and their belief systems and practices change, does it also affect the nature of projects undertaken, the scientific the process of scientific pursuit itself? Or is scientific pursuit independent of transition? Can handle no, I am a very confident that science is completely independent of uh, momentary turbulences which might come from government policy. Science will survive government. Uh, very often governments think that uh, they are there permanently, uh, which isn't true. Like for example, 20th century science has advanced despite all the turbulence of the 20th century. Occasionally, governments can destroy science in a country, as has happened in the Soviet Union, for instance. But I think in India, the edifice of science, I hope, is very much more robust. And so also, I think the, uh, the structures of government also transform periodically. And we may go through periods where government's view of science is uh, negative. But we will also come to times when the government's view of science is positive. So I think we can be optimistic. So we balance, yes. We are, we are you have to ride out the storm. And you also, you know, in a talk that you gave, I think, since of science, you know, let out that was with a kind of without fear. And you say that if you remove the last bit, then you know, that kind of freedom to remove that, then you say it's really about science and the way science is done and then kind of people see. And when you see the mind is where the mind is without fear, you know, there's this very interesting element of, of responses to events happening around you. And you, how do you respond to a particular event in terms of taking a position as a scientist? And I just now asked you that as editor of current science for so many years, where you also wrote opinion pieces uh, on issues concerning education, scientific research, you know, papers, the, the whole modes of publishing, whether it's any time, any event that that you think you should have taken a position on and you do not. And what what drives, I mean this is not the personal question, what in general do you think drives scientists to not respond to, to situations when their conscience should make them respond? No, I think sometimes, at least when I was writing as editor of Current Science, I was driven more by deadlines rather than by uh, uh, I would say rational response to an event that had happened. But I can give examples. Uh, I did write, for example, against astrology when the UGC wanted to introduce astrology as a course. Uh, that was a position contrary to what the government at that time. But to be fair, the government at that time didn't take the view very badly. Uh, I mean, people had all kinds of views. But there was one instance where I took a position, but I took a position a little bit too late. Uh, this was on the, uh, uh, at that time when the Pokhran explosion was uh, uh, done. And it was a highly celebrated event. But in many quarters, one also felt that celebrating such an event may have been uh, uh, not exactly the right thing to do. So one of my colleagues who was a pacifist uh, by, by nature, uh, the late Professor Amulya Reddy, he in fact wrote a letter to Current Science uh, saying that uh, Current Science has been silent on, uh, uh, on this issue. But some months later, the Indian Academy of Sciences invited Dr. Chidambaram, who was the one of the architects of the successful nuclear explosion, to come and give a talk in the faculty hall of the Indian Institute of Science at the annual meeting of the Indian Academy of Sciences. So after listening to his talk, I wrote an editorial saying it was the most inappropriate thing for the Indian Academy of Sciences to have done. Now, uh, 
I've been friends with Dr. Chidambaram always after that and still am. I think sometimes you do have to take a, a view. Uh, there's nothing personal in any of the views that one takes. But I think you need to express uh, yourself. Uh, but I think sometimes it's difficult depending upon what is the public position you're holding. Many of us are not, uh, who have been in institutions, have never been uh, completely separate from government. We are not like artists, authors, poets. Uh, we are not completely independent. And in my later years, I did have this problem that uh, when I was editor, would my view be taken as the as an individual who's editing current science, or would it be viewed as the view of the director of the Indian Institute of Science? That's a, a tough call to uh, sometimes. And it was always only my view and never the view of the institution. I think that's about all that uh, we have in time. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah.